Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here, and I'm probably gonna try to take things rather slow because I really don't feel like editing this video. I, it's gonna take forever to record all the parts to it, so instead of making this one full video, what I'm gonna do is show off my entire makeup collection. For this video here, we're gonna do part one, which is gonna be my freelance area. I'm gonna be showing you the area where I used to do makeup on other people. None of this stuff here is stuff that I would generally use. If it is, more than likely I would have a copy of it for myself, but this is usually the stuff I keep just for clients. In part two, I'm gonna start off showing you my personal collection, but part two is gonna show you things that are in cabinets, things that are in drawers, usually things that I have to get up and reach for. They're not things that are out in the open. And then for part three, what I'm gonna show you is the makeup that I have out on display, makeup that's on shelves, and the makeup that I use for my everyday recording. So please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're also subscribed to the channel. If you already are, I wanna say thank you. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And don't forget, you all still have time to enter my giveaway. Um, actually, in this first video, I'm probably gonna go right past some of the giveaway items. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I guess with no further ado, we're gonna get started. I'm not sure what kind of view I'm gonna have with this because I've never recorded with this like this before. But when the client would first come in, they would sit right here in this area. This is just a standard makeup chair. I got the tallest version that they have because many of you may not know, but I'm a very tall person. I'm actually 6'1". So most items to me feel rather small or very low to the ground, which is something I could not realize when I first got my first makeup chair, it was not a tall one, so I was hunched over doing makeup, immediately had to get rid of it because there is no way you can get through a whole makeup party hunched over and you're gonna be sore at the end of the day. So I got this one here that sits up rather high and I absolutely love it. Um, I didn't turn that light on right there that shines right down on the client, simply because with me being so tall, I need a light up closer to my face, not as low as most other people would need it. And so I just don't feel it's necessary to have that one on and create an extra glare today. But they would usually come in, they would sit here. Actually, no, they would sit there, but they would sit their things down back here on the other side of this here. I just have a plain black rug. You can get this from Amazon for about less than $100 for the entire thing. I just wanted something to take nice background pictures on and black just went with anything. Normally they would be able to set their things right here. Most women would also allow their children to sit right there. Um, usually I did prefer that a client came along, um, I mean came alone, but if I had to describe most of my clients with two words, it was usually working mother. So knowing that most women, you know, had a job and that's usually how they pay for my services is paying out of their own pocket and that more than likely they had children. I usually tried to make the children as comfortable as possible. So I had that over there. Those jeans are something that I'm getting ready to donate. I can't fit them. I can't use them. They're probably way past the return date. So someone at the church can have them, but I'm not going to hold on to them. Um, over here on the side of that too is some early Christmas gifts my mother sent me, so snuck and peeked into that, but we ain't gonna actually use it till Christmas. But then the client would come over here. I usually had a, oh, right now my head is, uh, I can't even think right now, but usually they would be able to cover themselves with this. I, the word gonna come to me in about five seconds. They could tie their hair up. I usually had a breath mint here. I always had one chewed before they would get in. It's more over there in that bowl. I always had myself one before they would come in. And I would just made sure just in case I got a client who was a smoker. Yeah, I, I'm someone I don't judge people for smoking, but the smell is just not very pleasant to me. They also got a business card. This is one of my old ones here. I wanna just cover up the information there because I'm not taking clients, so I don't want anyone trying to book right now. And usually they were also able to scan to get to my social media. That was always there available to them. And this right here is where I would have the brushes already laid out. I always laid out all of these brushes because I never knew exactly what type of look they were going to go for. But I always just wanted to be well prepared either way. And that way, if I didn't need certain brushes, I could always put them back. But no matter what type of look they were going for, I know with these tools here, I could get things started and more than likely actually complete them. And we have all types of brands here. Let me see, we have Eco Tools, Real Techniques, Elf, 
um, Ifra Ulta, Sigma, Bare Minerals, Morphe. So it's a mixture of things. And then these little containers here, I absolutely love them. They were like 10 for a dollar from Dollar Tree. I keep my uh, beauty blenders, not these, these aren't the beauty blenders. These are the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. So I have those here, have eye brushes. And although they still make these particular brushes, they don't make this set anymore. For these eye brushes, I remember one Christmas, I saw these on clearance at Nordstrom, grabbed every one that they had on the rack simply because it was the price of less than one of those brushes. And I didn't mind it having a miniature head on it. I'm like, I'm gonna make it work, especially at that price, I was able to restock my kit. 99% um, of the time, I don't need a brush switch, but usually if I do, I have this one sitting here waiting. They don't even, you don't have to pay that $20 for these now. Every dollar store in the country has these, so I just keep one of those. This right here was the best find ever. This is the magnetic tray. I remember Sephora did a magnetic brush set one year, and they did not sell at all. Like, they went straight to the clearance rack, and even then they had a hard time selling them. This was the actual tray you were supposed to store your brushes on. I realized this is the perfect mixing tray. I could put lipsticks on here, I could put foundations and things, and keep my hands clean. So I bought them, and especially because it has these rubber stop feet on them, you can pry them off if you want to, but I choose not to on this one. I bought every one that I could afford at $3, and now I have a stock of those to make sure I can always mix things up. I absolutely love them. Down there is a container to remind me to keep recycling my back to Mac items. I always try to make sure I save up and get a lipstick that I don't have. Right now, I really don't need any new lipsticks, which is why those are beginning to stack up. That bag right there is full of makeup, full of things that I tested out, realized they just did not fit me. I had two bags, one that was lighter than me, one that was darker. I've already given away the lighter bag. That one there is for a family member, so she'll be getting that pretty soon. And this here is part of the reason why I gave away my Mac and Selena bag is because as you can see, I have a huge Mac bag. So I don't need plenty more. And inside of here is just, let me get down on the floor. Down here we have plenty of other bags. Like, I don't know where this came from. I think it was Macy's, but simply because it has lips on it, I absolutely love it. And I have that. Most of these probably are NARS because I used to buy everything that I could from them. Another NARS bag. I believe this is a Dermablend bag, and I thought this was just so beautiful. I had to keep that one. I Shine Lash Connoisseur. You know I love their strip lashes. Got to keep that. Another NARS one. This looks similar to that first one. Oh, they're similar but different. Okay. But you see, it's a bunch of other bags in here. This is my favorite one, though. The NARS and Man Ray. Out of all the NARS collabs, this is my favorite one. But this thing is full of bags. I don't need to keep all of those. All of these bags. And that's why I'm giving away the NARS, I mean the Selena bag, because I don't need it. And I know there's a fan who not only would love it, but will probably also use it. Right here is my train case. I use this for traveling clients. I usually did more clients in-house than I did traveling because of course that costs an extra fee and most people would rather just come to me. Right here, I always kept the uh, Wi-Fi on, left the password there just in case a client needed it. I didn't want them to be in the home and then have a bad signal just in case they needed to contact someone. Usually the kids sat over there on the bench so they were able to go ahead, get on YouTube and things like that so they could leave their mother alone, give us time to get her glamped, and then they can be in and out as quickly as possible. So this is what this area looks like here. They will be sitting here. I will be standing there. Catch that. Those are the shelves with foundations, lipstick palettes, cleansing materials. Over here is a mixture of other brushes for other clients. You see I have enough to make sure that every client had their own sets of things. That's the giveaway prize there. We'll be over there in a minute. And over here is the other things that I would need to do their makeup, eyeshadows, tools, things like that, highlighters, lashes, things like that. Normally that candle thing would be burning, but we're gonna slide over here to the left. We'll start at the top shelf and look our way around. Okay, first up here is we have additional powders. As I told you, I absolutely love 
these containers here. They're ten for a dollar from Dollar Tree, so I have mixed powders in here. More than likely, those are powders that I either didn't like or problems just didn't have a right color or something wrong with them. So if they don't have a label on them, more than likely, I'm just not going to be using them. I bought those big ones as my original ones, left them over someone else's house, and then had to buy some tiny ones to uh, fill in until I got them. Got those back, so that's why these sit up here because my miniatures sit over there. Um, those there are my Tarte Shape Tapes. I use those to clean up brows. You see, I only have those four shades because I can just go ahead, use any one of those on any skin complexion, and then we can just clean up with foundation later. But I have those there. Um, I don't know which brow pomade that is. I think this is the Milani. Let me check and see. Yeah, I still never got a chance to actually try it out, but I did purchase it. This is an ABH dip brow in a shade that is much too dark for me. Yeah, this is in dark brown, so I brought this downstairs because I have my own. This here is a Cosmo Cube. I used to use it when I first got it, but I haven't used it in quite a while, so no need for that. These here are my LA Girl color correctors. I used to try to use this for concealer, but I personally just didn't like the wand on this on using on other people, so I just have it here in color correctors. Did use color correctors a few times, but I'm here to let you know most full coverage foundations and concealers will cover anything you need, so there's no need to go through all of that. Right here is some old business cards. I remember this was my very first business card when I first got started. I was passing these out. These were my very first four clients, and I was absolutely ecstatic that they all agreed to go ahead and be on the card. So I used to pass these out all over the city. That's why they're in these stamps here. Then I upgraded to this one here, and I had those. I still pass these out a lot more than likely, but right now I'm just not taking clients. And the ones that I'm using now, simply just to advertise my channel, is these here. So these are much larger than what I thought they were, so I'm going to have to reorder them in about a third, if not a quarter of the size. But they also have it here on the back, let me see, where you will be able to take your camera phone and just scan the top and it'll bring you straight to the YouTube. It lets you know about where you can send things for PR and things like that. Also has the schedule that I do. So I'm going to get this shrunk and put on a different level because that's way too big. And I don't need that. That's what these boxes here are, our business cards. So when we get things back popping, I'm already stocking ready to go. Up here is extra ABH brow poises. These are the colors that I like to have on stock but rarely ever use. Let me see what colors do I have. It says Auburn, which is a red, taupe, which is a very fair one, and blonde. I rarely got people who had complexions that were so fair I needed those. Even my soft brown and medium browns got the job done most of the time, so it's very rare that I needed those colors, but I did like to have them on stock. Right here, these are just plain white cards. Whenever you sort through business cards, they have those extra pieces. I just Wanted to find some type of use for them, even if it was just writing a note on them instead of just throwing them straight away. This was a clicker that came with this little ring light here, but I don't need that. I don't know why I just got a glare of that ring light like that. Next, on the first row, let me see if I can back up and give you a better view of that. These are my warm foundations. I once stocked up, saved all my points, and waited for them to go on sale. And once they did, on I think like a buy one, get one free sale, I cashed in all my points and bought every shade. And I also stocked up and slowly but surely got the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers because I absolutely love those concealers. This entire shelf here is all of my warm foundations because those were the shades that I used the absolute most, as well as the shades that fit most of the colors and their brand. And as you can see, I have them lightest to darkest. Let's see if you can get up there. You see you have your 102s through your 128s. Then you come down here, and this is 220 through 312. This one more than likely is upside down because it's probably getting very thin. As you can probably see if it can focus, it's a little crack right there. Not on the actual bottle, but where the foundation is about to dry up. So I held it upside down like that to help drain it all to the top. So if I ever need it, I don't have to sit there and shake it for half an hour. Up there, I have shade 330 through 355. And then down here, I have shades 356 through 375. 
And what I wanted to do is I have them split evenly as you can see, but I know my complexion personally is a perfect mixture of 312 and 330. So it automatically let me know if, if they had warm skin and they were lighter than me, their foundation would more than likely be on this side. If they were my complexion or darker, their things would be on this side. And it just made it easier to go and grab everything. And with the NARS concealers, I have them arranged lightest to darkest. This one here is lightest and they work their way over. You have your light complexions, your medium, your medium dark, and then your dark, and then they go in order. They're from left to right. And I know all of these are the warm ones and I have all of these arranged here. All of those are full sizes. And that is the whole second row. Here on the third row, we have the same thing our NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers, as well as our Maybelline Foundations. The thing is, here on the left side, we have all our neutral shades, and here on the right side, we have all our cool tone shades. And they're arranged the exact same way. If we were to go up here, let me see if I can get a peek past you. Right here, it's 115 to 230 at the top, and then down here is 245 to 365. And I have all full size concealers in there the same way, the light, the medium, medium dark, and the deep. And over here we have our cool tone shades. That top one is shade 105 to 235. Right here we have 242 to 380. And we have all full size concealers except this very fairest one here. This was a mini. Because I very rarely did someone who was light enough to use this one, I just got it in the mini. So that's what we have here on this third row. You all gotta excuse me, I've never recorded like this. We're doing this live. So yeah, so that was the foundation and concealer area here. That's just the second and third row. Now when we get down to the fourth one, we have our lipstick palettes. And I absolutely love these because not only were they a MAC formula, which is something I was comfortable with. I was also able to get them from Ulta. So baby, when they had them, I stocked up. Let me see if I can get down here. And we're gonna bring these closer cause screw that. Okay, and right here we have our MAC lipstick palettes. We have this first one here, which is the Modern Browns. We have the Necessary Nudes. Editorial Oranges. The Preferred Pinks. Select Plums. I finally found the editorial reds. Remember I kept saying I let someone borrow it. Finally found it. And this one didn't have a specific color. This was, a, I believe, like a holiday one. Yeah, the Select Lip by Six. Yeah, I don't think this had a specific theme to it. But I keep all of these here. Let me just push those back up. Because it always made it easier for a client to just be able to stand back and decide if you didn't know exactly which color you wanted, you could at least figure out which color family you wanted things to work in. And then you can go from there. And as you can see, I got another one of those Sephora trays right there. There was no way I was going to let those things go by for $3 when most people were selling them for like $10.15. I was getting me some. But they would always be able to get some. And then I never had to double dip into the tray because I could grab a um, spatula, scoop some out, put on a lipstick palette, and they can try that out. If they wanted to mix it up a little bit while I like it a little warmer, a little cooler, we have those shades to do that. Now down here on the very bottom is cleansing materials. First, you got to have your cleansing things. That's why we have our disinfecting wipes before and after every client. That was always important. But now with COVID, it's even more important. Here is Perian Spirit. This is my absolute, absolute favorite brush cleaner. I don't know what I would ever do without it. On those days where I really don't feel like cleaning my synthetic brushes or doing a deep down soap down cleansing, I can use this. It'll strip away most of the makeup. It'll disinfect my brushes and I'm good to go for the next day. And this is just a double sided mirror that I usually hand my clients so they can check themselves out. It has a 3x on one side 
and a regular end on the other so that way they can see their makeup up close and you know from a normal distance and I absolutely love it and with this being the first end of this part before I go over to the next side I'm gonna cut this camera off stand up and go to the other side because I want to make sure I save this here all right we're back and I just showed you all this entire shelf here and I just moved the lights and everything over so you can all see the shelves in here this is the one right next to it. This is shelf number two. This is the last shelf we have. But up here is where we have our pigments and our glitters. Let me go ahead and see if I can get a better view of these. Back here are my MAC pigments. Right here, let me see. We have the shade Blue Brown. This is my absolute favorite one of them all. I love Blue Brown. If you can only get one, grab this one here. Then we have the three from the MAC and Patrick Star Collab. See, this one is called Patrick Star. We have this one here. We have this gold shade here. It is absolutely beautiful. This one is called Twinkling Lights. These in. And this one is called Oh My God, It's Gold. It's hard to see those because they have a clear label with the white packaging on it. I mean, with white printing on it. This one here, see this is easier to read. This is Reflex Blue. All of these in this line is our Reflex. This is Reflex Gold. We have Reflex Red. We have Reflex Transparent Teal. Had to get me a green shade. These here were miniature sets that came from the holiday collections one year. This is a pigment in the shade Pink Opal. We have a pigment in Whisper Pink. We have a mini pigment in the shade Rose. I remember I got this because I did not want to pay the price for the Latin one. So I went ahead and got just the color here. I didn't need their packaging. And this one here is in Bright Fuchsia. So we have that one here. Those are all my pink shades. These here are the neutral shades. This one here is in Vanilla, a MAC classic. Vanilla is a classic, honey. This one here is in, what is this called? Let me see. English guilt. Got that just simply because it has the word guilt in it. This one here is copper sparkle. Absolutely beautiful. This one here is Showtime. I like the name of that one. These here are my Jay LaRue. Um, I think these are pigments and glitters. This one here I know for sure is a glitter. You can look at how big and chunky that one is. That's called 24 karat. I think the rest of these may be pigments. This one here is lemonade absolutely love lemons lemons are my favorite fruit so i absolutely had to get that one this one here is called let's see white gold okay we got white gold here we got jaya not sure who she is but she got a beautiful color here this one here is what is that heavenly yep heavenly is a beautiful color here and this one here it's bliss. Had to get that one. Come down a little further, and we have Makeup Forever in between, I mean, on the outside of my artist couture ones. And this here, let me see. This is a Starlet powder in the shade 12. Yep. This one here is a Starlet powder in the shade 6. We have all five of the current Artist Couture um, Diamond Light Shadows. This one here is a miniature that came in a lip duo, so I do have two of the Diamond Bronze ones. But this here from our um, Makeup Forever is a Starlit Glitter. This is in the shade S806. This one here is in S111. All right, and for Artist Couture, we have our Diamond Light Powders. This first one here. Okay, Spotlight Glitz. Okay, you see she a nice little pink. This one here. Okay, Golden Hour, I see you. This is Diamond Bronze, I know this one. This is just like the one behind it. So we have that. This here is Icy Girl, okay. And the last one here is Nebula, the one I was most excited about. 
I love my blue brown shades. So let me line these back up. Over here, we have some makeup for, I mean, no, these are Makeup Geek sparklers. We have four of these. This is in the shade, looks like it's Kaleidoscope. This is like a teal green one here. This one here is called Mood Ring. Okay. This one here, where are you? She's called Sugar Rush. I'm trying to catch that on camera. All right, well, she's Sugar Rush, and I don't know if she's going to act right, so you can see that. And this one here, Wildfire. These here are Sephora glitters. I got these, they came from two different sets from two different years. The reason why this front set has an X on them is to remind me that they're from the same collection and the ones behind it came a year after and they didn't have anything on them. But underneath, they literally numbered these one through four. And there's no color description or anything, so I have to remind myself that three and four from each year are not the exact same, so I don't need to have them all together like that. So these are the first two, one and two. This one here is from the next collection. This is three and four from the first year. From the second year, this is one and two. As you can see, with just the same number, there was not the same colors. And then this one here is three and four. So now we can continue on with our Dose of Color eyeshadow duos. This one here is in their cult classic in the color shell. Everyone had this one here, I believe. So to me, there was absolutely no reason why I didn't want to get it. I got it, but I actually never actually used it. I'll go ahead and pop this open and show you. Whoop, make sure we don't drop that. So it has a cream on top there, and then it has an eyeshadow color on bottom. I really don't want to open that jar up because I don't want to risk getting anything spilled. Holding this with one hand. So we're just going to try to see if you can get a color of that. It's just a nice rose gold shade. So have this one here. Then I also wanted something a little darker. This one here is in the color sunset. Let's see if I can get a view of the inside. So you see that has a much more orangey tone to it. And to me, the chunks look a lot larger in sunset as well. But I wanted something a little more neutral and a little more warm, so I grabbed that one there. So that's what's all here on this left-hand side is the pigments. On the right-hand side of this is where we have our actual glitters. That one right there in the middle is a MAC Black pigment, and he is in the shade... Let me see. This is in the shade Dark Soul. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get that. But this is just a plain black pigment. So I have that one there just because he was a free with purchase. In the back, we have glitters here. This first one was, I think, a birthday gift one year. As you see, it is just sparkly. It looks to me like the Michael Jackson outfit that I think he wore in Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. I'm not 100% sure on that. But that's called Lavender Hologram. So I had to have this one here for my birthday. It was just absolutely beautiful. This one here, it's a red one. I had never seen a red glitter and I absolutely love the colors red, black, and gold together. So I had to have this one. I'm trying to see if I can get a better view of it in the camera. This one is called, oh, just red. Simply just called red. And I wish I could get a better view of things right now, but I cannot get this thing to focus. The last one here is in the Chromat packaging here. I absolutely love this one here. I have several things from the Chromat collection. This is in the shade Reflex Turquoise. So I absolutely love this one here. Had to get that one. And it has like this little corset on it. Makes it even more beautiful. 
we have two miniatures here. Look at these from a Christmas set. These are both glitters. It's gonna be hard to read those. Let me see. That is hold these closer. Copper and gold. So just copper and gold glitters here from Mac. Absolutely love these. We have three pink ones here. This glitter here is in the shade pink. And that's what this one looks like. I have this one here. This looks like lavender hologram. This is called pink hologram. No wonder. It looks almost like the what's the name? Let me see if I can get a regular view of that one. As you can see how sparkly she is. Go on here, pink hologram. This next one here is called Heliotrope. Let's see if I can get you one of that. Yes, honey, she is sparkly. She ain't playing with the girls. Then I have a small makeup geek glitter here. This is the green one in the shade Supernova. Let's see if we can get that one. Okay, yeah, see, Torrance, it's easier to do it like this. I ain't about to keep going back and forth, honey. Next, we have five of the ABH glitters. I'm going to bring those up left to right. I'm going to see this yellow one is called Ghastly. This purple one is called Phantom. This mixed one is called Potion. This orange one is called Pumpkin. And this green one is called Salem. Let's see if we can get a view of those. Okay, yeah, and with these, these came from the ABH Halloween collection, I believe from last year. I grabbed all of those. I think I may have used that green one in a tutorial before, but I know for sure I haven't used all of them. I definitely know I haven't used either one of these purple ones or this yellow one. So I absolutely love the ABH glitter formula. They just generally tend to do more, how can I put it? They do more limited edition ones than full time ones. And it seemed like the limited edition ones are the fun colors. So I managed to grab this on sale before they went out and I'm absolutely glad I have them. So let's put these back, see what our next few look like. Okay, the next one are still ABH and this first one is Frosted. Then we have Glisten. We have Jolly. We have mistletoe and we have snowfall. And this is what these five look like. And they all are like a dual chrome type or they have like a sheer base with the color to them. And this was with their Christmas collection last year. Someone gifted me the Norvina, I believe volume one or volume. Yeah, it was the volume one, the purple vault. And it came with three of these colors. And I love those so much that I went back and bought the other two. I absolutely love them. I know for sure I used to use these as eyeshadow toppers on top of another look. They are stunning. I was so upset that they discontinued them, but nobody usually ever goes through a full size glitter. So I'm absolutely glad I have them. And I keep trying to put these little labels on them to let me know what color they ship to. Cause you see this says it ships to an icy blue. But even when I put that little label on there in two seconds, that's gonna pop back off. I don't know what I can do to keep those on there, but I keep trying and I'm tired of trying. So they just gonna have to be without it. I don't care no more. So we're just gonna put these back and we're gonna bring up this next six, which is probably the most interesting six of them all. This first one is called Cupid. This next one is Color Wave, uh, Mystic Teal. We have Day Two. Carnival, oh, almost dropped her, and Keep Palm. Okay, now this is this six here, and you can already tell the reason I got this one is just because it has a beautiful heart in it. Like, get into that, girl. How can you not love a heart-shaped glitter? I said one day, I think I'm gonna do a Valentine's Day tutorial with those little pieces. I cannot wait. The others, just because I'm a green lover, I had to get these two just because they were the ones that said green to me the most on the website. Those last two came in a holiday set. It came with the three of those little sheer ones like there. 
I mean, three of the sure ones from back there. And then it came with these two to complete that set. So I believe the only way to get those was in the set, but it didn't bother me. I wanted as many of them as I could possibly get. So I have all of these here. And I think this one here, just because it was called day two, it was the reason I grabbed it simply because it had a name that just didn't sound like the rest of them. And I'm like, I don't know what's day two about, but we went ahead and grabbed it. These here are, let me see if we can get an overhead view of these. These are my eye candy cosmetic glitters. I got all of these from the Morphe store or the eye candy website themselves. It used to be easy to just go to the mall after work and grab some eye candy uh, glitters from the Morphe store. Let's see if we can start from the top. We have our sugar formula, which tends to be their sheer formula with the color base here. Let me see if I can get in focus. We have Jelly Bean, Lollipop, Mad Melon, Marshmallow, no, Marshmallow, because it is the sugar formula, Peach Fizz, Tangerine Twist. Honey, just trying to just keep this in focus is a whole art in itself, honey. I don't see how people do it. Okay, we have Ballistic Berry, Black Bark, Butterscotch, Candy Coin, Candy Corn, Cherry Bomb, Confetti. Down here we have Double Bubble, Ginger Snap, Gumball, Jawbreaker, Sour Apple, Spearmint, Watermelon, Yellow Melon, and then we have the largest formula here because those up there are super fine, which are the small chunks. This here was the fine, which were the larger chunks. And here we have Double Bubble, Jingle Bells, Kiss the Season. I believe those last two were from the holiday of last year or if not the year before. Raspberry Blast, Shock Tart, Sour Grape, Sugar Cane, Taffy, Tiny Tart. Oh, Tiny Tart and Shock Tart. Those are some of the biggest, boldest, chunkiest ones they have, and I love those too. Over here, on the other side of those, because that one right here, if I back up, you can see that's pigments on one side, glitters there. The last things here is just this little miniature fan. My sister just bought me this one day, and I just never got rid of it. I even keep batteries in it to make sure if I ever just want to turn it on and catch me a quick breeze. I can, but I hardly ever use it. This here is just a uh, spare glass bowl from the Dollar Tree. These were some silicone applicators that Sephora used to sell to try to say that they were good for glitters. Honey, I never used them again after trying them, no ma'am. We have our nitrile gloves just in case I ever needed to use something or I had to get close to a client's eye, I can make sure my hands were covered because my nails can grow pretty long. These here are my MAC paint pots. These are the eye primers. Right now I'm using the soft ochre one, so that's the one that's missing. But this one here is the painterly. We have laying low, and this one is groundwork. This is an extra um, headband just in case I ever needed them. And here on the second row, it's just the same brushes that we have. We just have four cups usually here. Usually you have one at the top left that I keep empty to put uh, dirty brushes in. The one on the top right is usually for face brushes. The one on the bottom left is usually for, you know, dramatic looks, things like that, glitter applicators, wing liners. The one on the bottom right is usually one that holds eye brushes. You have right there a sponge, a glass tray for powder. You have your uh, metal tray for mixing liquids and things like that, a headband. And that magnet is there just in case I need to pop out an individual shadow whenever I'm working over there with eyeshadows and things. I'm someone who really loves working with singles. Down here, we have another tray of things, but because I just took those brushes from that spot, that's what would be behind me. There was no point of taking that bowl there and putting it on the table because I know I'm not gonna use those. Down here, oh, that's the giveaway prize. Okay, yes ma'am. Right here, this is what I just stacked it up just to make sure it was all out the way and put up neatly. This is everything that I'm putting in the giveaway. Right here is some extra things that I just went and bought from um, the lip bar. I had to go pick up some things from their Black Friday sale. These here are the makeup erasers that I picked up. 
I am someone who's been using disposable wipes for so many years to put up um, to apply my toner for my skincare routine. And I've just been trying to find a way of being more eco-friendly about it. So when they had a Black Friday sale here, buy one, get one, I made sure I grabbed these. I had to get the SpongeBob one, honey. The kid in me just would not allow me to skip over it. But I already have one upstairs on display. I have that one there that I'm gonna use. And actually give me one second because I wanna get down on the floor and I wanna open this one up because I wanna see what that looks like. Okay, we are back. And I knew exactly what these look like here because you can see straight through them as well as with the SpongeBob one where you could tell that they have the character faces on it. I could not remember for the life of me what these look like. So I just ripped one of those straight open right here. I toss that to the side. But I wanted to see inside and know what colors that we have. And I am too ecstatic to see that this actually has a red one in there. I did not think I would actually ever get an all red one. So because that's the one that's in here, honey, I'm just sorry. I'm gonna be keeping that one for myself. I wanted to try to make sure I was helping you all out because if I'm gonna be trying to be more eco-friendly, I wanted to make sure you all could do it too. But I ain't sharing my red one or my sponge bubble, honey. So we're gonna go ahead and share one of these with y'all. I'm gonna keep one of these for myself. I'm gonna put one of these in the giveaway. So I'm gonna add this over here with those. This is my stuff too for the sale. But I, if you want to know what items were put in the giveaway, just go ahead and watch that video. But I'm adding one of these to the giveaway as well. Because if I'm gonna be making myself a little more eco-friendly, I wanna help you all do the same. And down here is just a notepad. I have some coloring pencils here. Lord knows how old these things are, but there's no point of tossing them. And I just keep notes and things like here with face charts. Anytime I just wanted to make sure I had notes for ideas when I was trying to get shade matches going. Old notes from when I wanted to make sure I knew how to apply colors when I didn't know how. I always just drew out the things that I wanted to do and then I will come back in later. And as you can see, baby, I used to sit down for hours and try to figure things out. But sometimes I come back and do these. But nowadays, anytime I want to go ahead and just do a makeup look, I just pull out my brushes and do it on myself. It's very rarely that I actually pull my coloring pencils and my face charts out. But if for any reason I ever want to, they are sitting right there. This here is just a container that I never used. I never found a reason for it. So it just housed these three little brushes here. I think those came out of my lip bar containers. I mean, my lip bar palettes, but I never got a chance to use them. So they just sit there. And this here is just a roll of tape. I don't know what in the world I have that there for, but we'll come back and get him later. So I might have to get up off this floor and then we're gonna go up and look at what's on the table behind us. Back up off the floor and now we're looking at what's in our table area. This is right behind where the client will be sitting over here. I would just be able to step over here to the table and grab the finishing touching items to do a makeup look. This here is the brush where we have the extra tools. As you saw over there, just in case an eye look got a little more dramatic, I will have this bowl here of extra things like silicone applicators, things for wing liners, lower lash line makeup, and things like that. This bowl here would be for all dirty and used tools here, backup mints and things like that. I used to also keep fruit snacks around just in case if the kids needed them, the parents would be able to give that to them instead of letting them run off to the store. But up here we have primers, you have a dewy and a natural skin one. I would usually use the one on the left, but just in case someone had really, really oily or textured skin, I would use the one on the right. We have here, this little holder here, we have disposable mascara bombs at the top one. They're not attached, they're just stackable here. Um, you have lip wands for lip glosses and things like that. And this bottom one here has disposable q-tips so we have those this top palette here it is a double-sided sephora palette um, this was in collab with z palette and when they went on sale i stocked up on them i depotted three urban decay palettes on top as you can see it's the vice and let me see if you can get that the vice xxltd palette and i just depotted all the shadows here and arranged them in a color story where i felt as if it was easy to see and tell what color was where try to get my mattes and work my way down to the cooler, more colorful shades. And it's usually the closer you get to the bottom, the more metallic it will get and the more colorful. But then just because greens is my colors, I push those up over to the side because I felt as if they was over purples. I'm telling y'all, 
At one point in time, I did not like purples either. They was, to me, just as bad as oranges and blues. But we're starting to come around, and you know we love purples now. But back in the day, when I did this, no ma'am. When you flip it over, you can see inside of this one is the Alice Through the Looking Glass palette. Although I really like that packaging, I was not using it, and I wanted to try to get more use out of it. I realized depotted it would be the way to go. And when you look at it like this, you realize those top two rows were, no, that top row was matte. I believe the second row was matte with shimmer particles in it that came off as matte if you tapped your brush off. Then you had your neutral shades and your colorful shades, in my opinion. She looked like she's trying to come up. And I kept those in there, and I believe this is a Makeup Forever black shade. Yep. And to me, it was just a perfect travel palette. I could go neutral. I can go over the top. And it gave me more use out of it, but it was nothing I really cared about if I lost or missed or anything like that. So that's why I took it freelancing with me. And we have that there. This next palette here is the, what was this? The ColourPop She's a Rainbow palette. The thing is, I rearranged mine from the way that they sent it because I didn't like their layout. So this is the way I have mine. And if you notice, I have a dark green shade here in mine because I added that. There is no way in the world you was about to give me a rainbow palette and not give me a dark matte green. First, green is my favorite colors. And second, I have hooded eyes, honey. So what you're not about to do is tell me I can't go into my crease and then be good. No, ma'am, we wasn't doing that. So I swapped him out and what I took out was this glittery orange shade that they gave me because I felt as if I didn't need her. So I kicked her out, rearranged them and added that green in and then we was good. And inside this with this is some additional Makeup Geek shadows. I had a many duplicates and out of all the duplicates I didn't want to give away, those two matte greens were it. So I have those and I felt as if they would complement this palette here because that's even deeper than that one. So go ahead. Next by ColourPop, we have an It's My Pleasure palette. I ordered this one and it came broken, one of the shades. And so they offered to not only let me keep this one, but they sent me a new one. So I decided to repress this one and put it in my Pro Kit. And as you can see, it's Mr. Sandman of the shade that came broken. But putting it in my Pro Kit, baby, they absolutely love this color story. And Purples was always a big hit. And for free 99, it was even more of a hit to me. So we have that one here. Same thing with this one here. This Huda Beauty New palette came with a broken shade, honey. I offered to send it back. They told me I can keep it and they sent out another one. So I repressed those broken shades and added that to the freelance kit because I wasn't keeping it for myself. And this one, you can see, baby, I think every shimmer in this one came broken except that one there. This one may have still been intact, but it had to be repressed. And this is another one. Women with a much lighter skin tone complexion absolutely love this palette, so I have it here in my freelance kit. But the one I gladly bought, oh, see how it got sparkles and stuff. Jacqueline can't never stay clean with this white packaging. But this one here is the palette I purchased absolutely most during the time I was doing makeup, honey. This palette was always my absolute favorite, and that is the Huda Beauty Warm Brown Obsessions, honey. I can't tell you how many of these I went through. And this is what she looks like on the inside, honey. You can just see the dips and the divots in this thing. Honey, she was absolutely stunning. My absolute most used and most repurchased palette ever. It was just nothing like it. And the fact that they are discontinuing it, baby, who to know they wrong for that. This needs to be permanent. It needs to be extant. I mean, it needs to be expanded into a full 18 pan palette. We need to bring this one back. I don't know why she did that. Another palette that was in full rotation, I went through more than one of these, the original Jaclyn Hill palette. This is the one that I went through so many of them, I ended up having to put my personal one into the kit, but I'm never going to go through it completely. Once I think a paint shade is about to hit pan, honey, it's going back. It's going back, back. But I have this one here just to make sure I always have it. I mean, it's just a complete palette, honey, like... Say what you want, but this palette was an OG and it was a classic and it was good for a reason because the color story, the formula, it was just all beautiful. You just could not go wrong giving it as a gift, using it on clients. You knew you were going to get the job done. Absolutely love it. 
And this here was actually the last palette that I ever used on a client, the Bare Necessities. I remember doing this for a birthday party and I never got the chance to actually do a tutorial on it because it was always in rotation on clients. But this palette was absolutely beautiful. To me, it was like the Jaclyn Hill palette without stepping out of the box. If you knew you wanted to just stick to neutral and professional colors, this is what you went for. If I wanted to add a little pop of color, I could go with the Jaclyn Hill. But this one here just never let me down. It was always beautiful. Never had no issues with it. So have that there. What else do we have here? Oh, my notes, just in case a client needed some information about something, a dry, I mean, a microfiber towel to wipe myself off, make sure I can keep my hands and things clean, make sure I can keep brushes clean. Always had those here. This here is napkins, just in case a client needed to wipe their eye or anything like that. And underneath this is a glass tray where I made it myself. I could not find a glass tray that I liked. So I did a DIY project where I glued those little rubber stops underneath it myself. Baby, we was feeling bougie and fancy and cheap at the same time. Come on through for the DIYs. Right here, we have, let's start at the top, alcohol to spray and disinfect everything. After every client, everything must be disinfected. We don't use eyeshadows and things like that on one client and then go in with a set of brushes and do the next client. You always disinfected things. Hand sanitizer. It doesn't matter how clean I thought my hands were. Before you touch anyone else's face, you always make sure you grab your pump and hand sanitizer. And that's something you always make sure the client sees you do so they feel even more comfortable with you touching their face. Up here we have some Mac Fix Plus. I usually rotate it through the Fix Plus with different scents. So every time they came, they could always get a different experience. This one here is Coconut. I believe they're most, I mean, no, that's the Cucumber. The one that they liked the most was the coconut and the rose. That rose was always a big hit. And then this here, I think it's from Scandinavia. Yeah, because I always rotated between Scandinavia and All Nighter. But usually Scandinavia had cheaper prices that I could get for my freelance kit. So that's usually what I used. Right here is some more Dollar Tree containers. More than likely, all of these glass containers you see are going to be Dollar Tree down to that heart shaped one. And why pay more when I can pay less, honey? And we have our ABH Brow Wizards. These are the colors that I would use absolute most often on clients. Let's see if I can get a good view of that. We have medium brown, dark brown, granite, and soft brown. So these are the colors that I would more than likely use on most people. So this is the one that I would have on there. Everybody would always more than likely fit those shades. And it was very rare that I had to do more than that. This next one was razors. You usually had two different kinds, just a plain one like this. One that goes straight across like this, just in case you needed to touch up a brow, trim an um, eyelash or things like that. This next one here is for eye products. You have your eye primer here. You see your next glitter primer. We have that one there. We also have some eyelash glue. We have that here. Also have our CoverGirl Clear Mascara. You can use that for clear. You can actually use that as clear mascara. Sometimes you can use it to brush it through the brows. This next one is tools. I'm surprised this glue is over here. Those should probably be over there, but we're not even gonna worry about it today. But we got some uh, rose gold tweezer and tweezers here. We have some tweezers to apply lash strips. The funny thing is I always grab a pair of tweezers to put lash strips on. But as soon as I get close to your eye, I just fling them to the side. I think this is a Shiseido Lash Curler. Let's see. Yes, ma'am, that's what that is. I absolutely love the Shiseido Lash Curler, so we have that there. Right here, we have lip liners. These are the NYX lip liners. I love these bad babies, especially on the sale. So we always call these here. Um, I have them in five different shades of brown. I think, no, I think we have like four different shades of brown and then a red. And I always cut the tips right there on the edge to remind me that these were the ones in my freelance kit and not the ones for myself. And somehow, somewhere, I done picked up gold glitter, baby. My fingers are sparkling. So after I do this last part, I'm going to show y'all. This here is for skin things. You have your little moisturizer to make sure you can always keep uh, clients' skin hydrated. You have a... 
Aquaphor lip balm. I needed something that had no scent, no color. And my absolute favorite gloss for clients, the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb. I use that on everyone. These here are our ABH Brow Powders. Have this in four different shades. We have soft brown here, medium brown, dark brown, and granite. Yep, and granite. We have that there, right here. Okay. Next, we have our Laura Mercier uh, Candle Glow Shear Perfecting Powders. I have this in all six shades. They are just numbered one through six. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I absolutely love these things. I just wish, I'm gonna see if I can open this and show you, that they would just extend this shade range two more colors because this here is shade one, which is the lightest shade. And I wish they would do a shade zero that's a little bit lighter than that. And then this here is shade six, which is the darkest. And personally, I wish they could go darker than this. This is shade six. I want a shade seven and possibly a shade eight because I absolutely love these powders, but I just really wish they could extend that range a tiny, tiny bit. But I absolutely love those as finishing powders on all clients. Up here, we have our contour palettes. You have the True Complexion ones by Black Radiance. I have them in all three palettes. You have your light to medium here. Let's see if we can get these open. And I love these because these are catered to different skin tones so you didn't have to worry about if this one fits me because they generally were flattering if you went in with a soft hand. You have your light to medium, you have your medium to dark, as well as your dark to deep. I'm gonna pop these open for you. Oop, wanna make sure we don't drop you, honey. I did custom ones where I filled up all of the colors here. On this one here, this is my cool palette. I have all three of the highlighting as well as all three of the contour palettes here, I mean colors. And I put that in the cool shade, so just in case you had a neutral to cool skin tone, this was the one I was gonna use. And this is the warm one here, and as you can see, it has a much more warmer complexion to it. This is the one that I use most often, and that shade in the middle was the shade that honestly, I would say a good 60% of my clients use. So this was the one I had to repurchase individual colors for. I never had to repurchase for that cool one just because, yes, actually, I did once when they went bad. I didn't actually ever hit pan and run through one of those though. So this is the warm one. I absolutely love that one. And I'm here to tell you, just buy the shades you need. Do not buy that full palette if you don't have to. Right here is the ABH uh, Blush Trios. I absolutely love these, especially when they put them on half off. So I have all five shades just in case I get a client. I never had to just pick one straight shade that went on. I could always mix and blend. I didn't have to stick to one palette. And I wanna see if I can get up close for you because we have one here, Pink Passion. We have Pool Party. We have Cocktail Party. We have Peachy Love. And we have Bury a Door. Up here we have highlighters. I absolutely love the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish Formula. To me, it was what was most beautiful on clients. And I have these here in the five permanent shades that they have that came off more neutral. They have some permanent dual chrome look ones, but there was really never a need to actually have those in my kit. We start off here with our cool tone shades here. We have Double Gleam. We have Superb. We have Whisper of Guilt. You know I love the word guilt. My absolute favorite, oh darling honey. She was that girl. And glow with it. Beautiful. Then my tips jar. Right now she empty because ain't nobody been here. So ain't nobody been here to leave no tips. But the one thing I was blessed to be able to say is when I was working, the tip jar always has something in it. So shout out to my clients. And right here is another one of those Sephora double-sided palettes. And I depotted some palettes here that I wanted to put in. On that left-hand side was the KVD Vegan Beauty Alchemist palette. And you see I put little labels on it to let me know that it's opal, which was the pink, amethyst, which was the purples, sapphire, which was the blue, and emerald, which was the green. Up top came from the ABH uh, Glow Kits one year. I purchased one, liked one shade, it was just perfect. 
and never got around to the other three. So that one there is Sunburst, Summer, and Golden Bronze. They were all too light or too dark, so there was no need for it. Right there is, that was the Manizer Sister Trio from um, The Bomb. You see you have Mary Luminizer, Cindy Luminizer, and Betty Luminizer. None of the shades were actually perfect for me and I never felt the need to mix. So I just added them to my kit to make sure I had something for everyone else. And this one here was a Sephora blush that I used to absolutely love. To me, it came off like a glowy blush that you could also use as a highlighter. But because it was too dark for me to use as a highlighter, I just used it as a blush topper. Ended up stopped using it and just put it in my freelance kit because it just came off flattering on most skin tones. Right here is the Nikki Tutorials um, and Ofra Highlighting Trio. Space Baby, Glaze Donut, and Glow Goals. And I got this simply because I wanted that shade right there on the left. I wanted that icy blue shade but didn't want to pay full price for an individual. But once I realized it came with Glaze Donut, which is the shade that Nikki Tutorial said was fair enough for her, I had to have it to make sure that even the fairest of skin tones had a highlighter I could use. And then the fact that it came with a shade that was much deeper and darker meant for the Ofra formula, I had a complexion range. Couldn't pass it up, especially when it went on sale. So I have that here. Absolutely love it. And although these two here are NARS containers, they are not NARS powders. They are a mixture of powders I made myself. So I know that's Midnight Banana and Sasha Buttercup powder, which is this one here, the Buttercup. And then this one here says Dolce Buttercup, which lets me know this is Midnight Dolce and Sasha Buttercup. It's a 50-50 mix. And right here, I just have all of my individual Ben Nye powders. I absolutely love them because they were not only tinted, but they could give you a full coverage if you wanted to go that far. So to me, they were absolutely beautiful. Let's see what shades do we all have here? We have Cameo. We have Beige Suede. We have Buff, Rose Petal, Super White, Topaz, Camel, Dolce, Banana, Banana Light, Isle of Sand, Colorless, the best one, Dark Cocoa, this is Dark Cocoa, Clay and Nut Bank. And the last part to show you over here was the lash section here. Um, I always kept free lashes over here just in case a client came and they didn't have any idea what they wanted. I always gave a free uh, strip of lashes with all looks. They must have been synthetic in order to get them for free. I did have mink lashes, but that was an additional charge. The absolute, absolute, absolute best seller every single time was these here, the Demi Wispies. I could easily go through 10 Demi Wispies by the time I can go through one of anything else, but I always wanted to have a range, especially if someone on sale, just so people could have a variety of things. I personally, every now and then, could go for the full Wispies, but to me, the Demi Wispies were my babies. There was just no denying it. If I wanted a little extra flair, a little glam, I would go with these Kiss Jubilees, but I absolutely love these. Normally here, I would have the oil burner going, but once again, I have the camera plugged up, so I don't have that on. I used to love switching these up, and I was so disappointed when they stopped this cherry one that I absolutely love. So I think I have like three cubes of it left, and then I'm just done for the day, and I'm going to be like, uh, got to find a new favorite. But my favorite part of being over here is... I always kept the scissors right there by them just to make sure I could trim lashes. But these little babies were my favorite part right here. These were tweezers that I got at Sally Beauty and I got them simply because they were beautiful. I just, I had never seen tweezers that were decorated like that. And my best friend gave me that crystal to put here to make sure my home and my clients stay safe. And I made sure I grabbed this one here. As you can see, we got the woman of color right there on the top in the middle with the textured hair. Honey, yes, come through for the girls. She's wearing green because that's my favorite, so I got her front and center. Right here, our right-hand woman got us another woman of color, honey. We got her out here stunting with them, honey. She giving us the tea. She got her hair down, but because we don't discriminate, honey, we had to bring us another lady in, honey, and she got her a cat because, baby, I don't mind nobody having them a dog, but I personally am a cat person. I don't like having to train and do all this picking up and all that. No. 
cats potty train themselves so i absolutely love it and they keep mice away so we got her on here for the team because everybody's welcome to join the squad honey but because i have a mother and a sister those was going to be those two and the friend was supposed to be anybody else but this is the end of this area here but that right here is the end of this video here i hope you all truly enjoyed things if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you're also subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of my future uploads I'm gonna make sure I record part two of this series, which is gonna be makeup that I have in cabinets and drawers and things like that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But with nothing else, I'm gonna be heading out and leave me comments down below letting me know how you thought of my freelance area. And with nothing else, remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.